Duelist bringing you Chaos March action. Hollander D for Corn, Bob Thor G, Chezer Uziel D, Art of War, Bushwrecker Prime, Burner Thor C, Ivan Avatar A, Grabaker Solitaire E, Demi, Bushwrecker E, Thunder, Bushwhacker D. Opposing them are the Takanov forces that are currently up, one map to none. Bushwhacker D for shooters, Zoidberg and a Shadowcat C, Vivisector and a Donar D, Mr. Gray and a Warhammer D. Killed them all in a Warhammer E, G. Paul and a Uller F, Dolorich and a Avatar A. Nyx in a Avatar B and Jesus in a Vulture F. The two teams uh, have been waiting a long time for this battle, so they're uh, definitely raring to uh, get up and shoot some things. And uh, we're going to have a limit of two holds in this battle. And uh, you can see that they're uh, taking fire from Vivisector's uh, Donar right now. It means that the Takanov attack force has eight carrying assets. This Donar will be able to track their movements. They do not have a lot of good anti-air, and uh, so they can try to rush the ground forces if they want to, uh, given their advantage. We will have no holds because uh, Vivisector has landed shot, but um, air power is definitely something that is uh, hard to counter for the defenders at the moment, because even though this is a Duchy of Small uh, held planet and they have... Uh, some mercenary groups they could uh, utilize. I don't believe that there are many, if any, um, uh, flying assets available. And uh, both teams were given instructions that both teams could take anti-air. And uh, so we have them uh, moving around right now. Let's take a look at the Takanov uh, ground forces. They're going to let that Donar do its work for a while. That Donar is dangerous. Uh, we can see uh, Takanov is uh, set up over here in the corner of the map. They're going to send Zoidberg out as uh, a ground scout. They've set up a uh, firing line and uh, they're keeping an eye out for things, so it will be hard for the uh, attacker, uh, for the defenders uh, to rush. Zoidberg, the leader of this uh, organization, and is uh, setting up a bit to uh, provide uh, information for Vivisector and also to uh, determine when uh, it will be time for his forces uh, to move in and attack. Let's move back to the defenders and see how they're dealing with uh, the Donar. They can uh, move to maybe some of the bases or under uh, some, try to get to uh, some cover under some buildings. Right now they're trying to spread out to uh, take the uh, asset on. So we see uh, Korn with his AC2s and his Light Gauss attempting to uh, take on Vivisector. You always want to spread out when you can to try and uh, shoot down uh, something uh, like a VTOL when you don't have uh, a dedicated anti-air asset like a Rifleman or uh, a Hewitt. As uh, let's watch uh, Vivisector, this is where most of the action is right now. As he uh, has 900 meter range and uh, his opponents can shoot at him from range as we see uh, Zoidberg has decided to uh, move up and uh, attack on the ground there on uh, one of the mechs. So Vivisector will be up here doing his thing, reporting uh, team movements and and uh, where stuff is as uh, Zoidberg was able to uh, try and get uh, some of the mechs to uh, freak out a bit maybe and uh, move into a different position. Uh, you can see just how spread out the defenders are right now, uh, trying to get shots off on the Donar as uh, Zoidberg gets yet another shot off on Demi. Demi trying to return the favor, given that he has the exact same range that uh, the Scat C that's shooting him has. He's trying to line up. Uh, Burner's trying to make sense of a 9v9 drop list like this, trying to provide a cover for himself and trying to keep his team composed. So that Donar is going to uh, make life a little bit uh, interesting for a while as the defenders now continue to uh, spread out and they are uh, now attempting to move a bit to get to, to, get to cover around the wall as uh, we'll stick here with now uh, with Demi trying to get some shots off uh, to keep uh, Zoidberg from moving in and uh, getting hits. Burner having taken some pretty decent damage to his back with the PPC, so he's trying to get play defensively here. Bob uh, trying to chase Zoidberg a bit with the ATMs. The two Thors now moving up. If they can take Zoidberg down, that'll uh, take care of a lot of the communication. Zoidberg is the uh, commander for that unit. Largely uh, all Russian language, but he also has uh, a guest with him and Shooter that uh, does not speak Russian. 
So if they're able to get Zoidberg down, that would be a, uh, a key loss for the Takanov attackers. As we have a firing line now set up and uh, the uh, Kanov forces are now moving up a bit to a trend range. As you can see, uh, Burner now able to utilize uh, his range advantage uh, on Zoidberg, who can only hit from 900 meters. Uh, he is just taking a beating right now as he's trying to get free. He uh, should be far enough away now that he'll live, but he is definitely heavy damage, so he will have a hard time uh, moving up as we uh, spread out to uh, check the other flanking area here. Uh, let's uh, take a look and see if Zoidberg uh, has support from his uh, teammates or if he's stuck in the area. Nope, he's uh, stuck down here for now. He's uh, trying to get some shots off. He's going to take some LRMs, and that might be enough to take him down if he's hit. He'll jump Jet out of the way, and uh, he'll live to fight, uh, fight another day. That was very close as uh, Zoidberg now moves uh, up to his teammates as they uh, set up, uh, attempt to set up their firing line on uh, the other side here. And I'm sure that Vivisector continues to uh, provide uh, scouting and information and um, continues to uh, fire off PPCs as, as, as we move out. As uh, the two teams exchange uh, extreme long-range weapons, machine guns reach out to 1,600 meters, which is pretty nuts and pretty cool. As uh, Zoidberg now uh, will move up to try and uh, get a good eye from the top of the hill there. And we can see the two uh, AC2 cannons uh, exchanging firepower here as uh, the LRMs. This is uh, a long range affair. Zoidberg trying to line up a shot, didn't like anything that he saw, so he's moving in. The two teams activating uh, extreme range here. Uh, Nivix now trying to move up to support to support Zoidberg. The uh, VTOL is uh, still up there providing its uh, scouting information and firing away that PPC which uh, won't run out of ammo anytime soon because it's uh, unlimited until you die. And uh, we started at around 9985. So we're about 8 minutes into the 30 minute time limit as we see the defenders uh, trying to push off uh, to the far side but Dolorich uh, able to move up and uh, get some missiles away to try and uh, stop that advance. Um, we see some long-range firepower now uh, as the Kanoff forces uh, attempt to move up and uh, support Zoidberg, the head of the spear. Taking an eye out, keeping an eye to let his team know where to go as he takes a uh, long-range PPC shot from the side. He cannot take much more damage, so he's uh, going to pull back with his uh, machine gun, uh, with his jump jets at the at this point. Uh, neither team's lost an asset yet as we see the uh, defense having uh, moved up. Rabakur uh, recent, uh, recently uh, joined uh, SJ. Good to see you. Um, right in the middle of an entrance trial while we do uh, the rest of this tonight and um, let's uh, move along with the rest of the defense forces now. Uh, as you can see they're still having to deal with that donar. They're trying to uh, get it down but uh, Vivisector knows Burner's the likely the drop commander for this team, so he's trying to get him down. Burner having taken a lot of defense, uh, a lot of damage. So uh, now follow some of the individual mechs for a moment or two as we move along. Uh, kind of a break and play right now for the two teams. This is the first time anybody's had to deal with air power in the rebooted Chaos March in quite some time. So uh, teams are. Uh, perhaps a bit rusty in uh, knowing how to deal with it. As uh, Zoidberg continues uh, to tell his team to hold and uh, wait for the defenders to move in and do damage, that uh, Donar, is, uh, until it gets destroyed, is an extreme advantage. Uh, they can just sit back and uh, wait for the Donar to do its thing. The one disadvantage is if the Donar does get destroyed, then it is, uh, it's already one less carrying asset, but if the Donar gets destroyed, they lose a lot of their uh, scouting and uh, radar abilities. You uh, continue to see Zoidberg uh, attempting to utilize his jump jets along with Dolorich who has uh, joined him and they're trying to just scan. Uh, they know where the enemy's at but they also, but uh, even with that information uh, there's a lot of room to spread out in the general area. So they're just trying to wait for targets of opportunity and they're taking a look around as you see possibly that the defenders have uh, split their forces rather significantly and uh, let's follow uh, Viv Sector now for a bit. As we had a uh, Disconnect and this pilot will uh, attempt to get back to their asset if their asset despawns where they are killed as the BA they will be uh, at the end of the battle um, Looks like we had to DC at some point find out who this pilot is 
as the uh, back of Ivan is now out, and uh, slowly but surely Vivisector is uh, providing a rather significant advantage for uh, the attack forces as they move forward. Long battle, both teams uh, trying to be on the move as uh, you see the attackers now uh, repositioning uh, uh, on information certainly provided by Vivisector as the uh, battle armor pilot uh, desperately attempts to get back to their asset. Demi trying to get back to his asset while Bob and his teammates uh, attempt to get to cover from the donor. And see that Takonov is utilizing the cover of the mountains around the edge of the map to try and close the distance on their uh, weakened opponents. Demi now back in his bushwhacker. Uh, very critical asset for the defenders, especially if uh, Takanov decides to move in. The defenders are uh, representing Duchy of Small tonight, as this is their planet that is uh, being attacked in turn three of the Chaos March. It's a nice, beautiful Saturday for everybody, Some, uh, perhaps for some of our Russian area friends, it's already Sunday, but uh, we continue to fight. Uh, we're early on in our cast march evening. We've uh, had a good battle so far here on this map, and uh, Takanov was able to uh, be victorious on map one. They need a total of three victories in order to uh, secure the planet attack. Started at 85, we're 13 minutes in. Let's just continue to follow the uh, coordinated movements of the ELH team representing uh, Takanov Task Force. Now, one strategy that you could utilize is that uh, if you play, if the defenders wish to play extremely defensively and make the ground forces hunt them down. If they can somehow uh, neuter the effects of the Donar, then they have more carrying assets if they can uh, extend this map uh, another 15 minutes or so and uh, and uh, have the same... No and uh, they can even uh, still have a tie. So it's actually uh, on the attackers. Uh, Takanov has to take down at a minimum one asset in order uh, to have uh, a victory here. And so uh, while the PPC Donar could sit here for all 30 minutes and and chew away at the armor of the assets. Um, it's still got to be in the back of Zoidberg's mind here that uh, they will have to uh, close in and be able to uh, take down um, the assets uh, that the uh, Donar has uh, continued to uh, squash up as we move in now to take a look at our uh, defense force, our duchy defenses, uh, to see what's happening over here. They continue to move, try and stay away from the attack force, and also to uh, try and spread out and uh, get some fire off on the Donar, which uh, continues to be alive, and uh, Demi is now taking a pretty decent amount of damage. The idea being that uh, if Demi gets shot like that, Ivan or one of his other teammates with good range and, uh, and a shot to line up can uh, take down the uh, Donar. Uh, in a situation like this, it kind of stinks to have to deal with the flying thing, but that's well within the rules and fair. But uh, in a situation like this where you don't have any thing that can point up, you know, it can be kind of dangerous. So they continue to uh, try and spread out and, and deal with the Donar. They are now entering uh, very strange parts of the map that you don't often see. Most of the battle usually happens way off there in the center, and you can see our uh, defense forces are being closed in slowly by the attack forces. As now Chezar is being attacked by not only the Donar, but uh, I'll uh, guess Zoidberg. Bob realizing this, telling his team to 
try and continue to spread out, but uh, either move away or uh, get ready to start engage as uh, the Takanov forces are getting ready to set up a firing line on the other side of that auxiliary base. Bob and the rest of his team attempting to uh, stretch out and move out a bit here. Uh, if they can't take down the Donar, they're certainly going to try and uh, uh, not let the Donar shoot any one thing. And uh, I'm certain that these veteran pilots of Wolverine's Rebirth and uh, various other mercenary groups are uh, firing back and have done damage to the Donar. Donar does not have a ton of uh, ammo, uh, armor, as uh, we now see uh, some long-range fire being returned by the uh, Dutchy defenders. We're going to have to spread way out in order to see all this fire here. So the two teams are uh, definitely now at full engagement, about uh, 900 meters from each other. And uh, the uh, both teams are going to be forced to engage here. Why don't we focus in on the Takanov attackers as they're uh, a bit more bunched up and uh, might be easier to fit on the screen here. So they uh, are certainly uh, causing a lot of damage now, and uh, they're trying to catch the forces off guard, as it uh, looks like one of the defenders is now by himself. Zoidberg attempting to take advantage of that, but having already been heavily damaged from earlier in the battle, uh, we'll have to uh, back off a bit. Right now we have a number of pop-tarting jump jetters uh, utilizing their uh, advantage of being able to hit above height, as I believe that's the bushwhacker that's uh, exchanging fire with the other team on the defenders on the extreme other end. I'm starting to become a factor here. We started at uh, 986, uh, 985, and uh, we're now moving to about 10 minutes left. So the teams, as I mentioned earlier, Zoidberg telling his team we need to be within attack range in case we need to uh, take something down and be aggressive. Uh, the two teams are now uh, exchanging pretty decent firepower. You certainly think that the defenders have taken a lot of damage, and uh, one or two... Uh, hard hits might take down one of the assets, and when they do, it'll be interesting to see if the strategy changes for either team. You can see a lot of Gauss and PPC assets here as we have some ELRMs or LRMs away that may or may not hit depending on how they track. They still continue to try and focus on uh, Zoidberg as those missiles are dump fired, and the two teams are uh, now. Getting a, in a bit more of a formation. They still have to deal with the Donar on the defense side, but uh, they are definitely attempting to uh, return fire where they can. You can see some of their assets have uh, climbed the hills, trying to match the verticality of the jump jetters for the Takanov forces as we uh, attempt to zoom in a bit. You can see that uh, Zoidberg has uh, moved on top of the hill to try and do that, and we may have a death. We do. Demi down. Now uh, both teams have uh, eight carrying assets, and that will be an advantage. Uh, let's see if the tactics change a bit for Zoidberg as Mr. Gray takes some firepower here. You have to be very patient in a situation like this, but if you get an opportunity to fire off your weapons, you certainly need to do that. I'm going to uh, move up to Zoidberg's perspective to uh, get a commander view and uh, see what he sees. He's playing defensively himself so that he can stay alive and provide orders for his uh, teammates. He's attempting to see where the defenders have gone. Demi was in a bushwhacker of some type, either the Bushwhacker D with pulse lasers or the ERPPC and Gauss model. Either way, uh, definitely a lot of firepower loss there, and so far the tactics appear to be the same as Zoidberg uh, takes some missiles and he'll have to uh, move back to cover a bit here. You can see that uh, the Takanov attackers are moving a bit to the edge to try and uh, close the distance a bit as they move a couple assets back that perhaps have uh, taken a decent amount of damage. The Donar continues to fire away in the sky. And let's uh, follow the individual assets a minute as you can see the defenders attempting to get into position a bit and the attackers are uh, attempting to utilize their advantage as Vivisector continues to unload PPC after PPC. Certainly uh, going to be some talk, I'm sure, after this match about the effectiveness of airspace and uh, whether or not the defenders had access to sufficient anti-air. So that's always a conversation after something like this. But uh, that's something that we happen in Chaos March is uh, the defenders likely lose one more asset that just went critical, which will uh, damage anything that was around it. And uh, if that was a defender, then the attackers now certainly have the option to pull back and have the advantage... Uh, as uh, unless that was something that uh, unless that was an explosive uh, device, which it could have been uh, on the map. Sometimes items in this map are things that uh, are destructible environments. But no, in this case, it was uh, Chezar and his mech 
Uh, the defenders are now down uh, one carrying asset. They are uh, facing, uh, count, uh, counting the Donar, they're facing one more asset. And uh, the attackers certainly are going to uh, have the option here either to close in and try and close this out or to uh, pull back and let time expire. So we can see some movement for the Kaunov attackers. Now that they've taken out Burner, they'll certainly move in and uh, they will uh, move in and attempt to clear, clean the slate. As we uh, move down to... We uh, now uh, update the time a little bit. We have uh, just now, now actually 10 minutes remaining, but... That's a moot point, is uh, the defenders uh, probably don't have enough firepower with which to uh, come out here and take this. So uh, we'll move to map 3, and uh, the Takanov forces will likely have an opportunity to close out the planet 3 to nothing. Still six assets remaining for the defense forces. Having lost Burner, though, uh, their central hub of uh, communication, uh, and uh, Ivan and Bob, uh, two of their better players, Rather heavily damaged right now. Uh, you just wonder uh, how much they'll be, how much damage they'll be able to take. Um, not being able to take down that donor may have ultimately sealed their fate from early on, as uh, that donor has probably gotten off 50 or 60 PPC shots. As we now uh, move in to follow the Takanov attackers as they uh, decide to play defensively, but also to uh, attack some of the assets. As you can see, that the jump jetting solitaire was able to move up and attempt to uh, sneak in a couple of shots as he buys uh, the rest of his team time to try and reposition and uh, with uh, time getting getting low here you certainly have to think that they may be attempting uh, a last run at trying to counter the Takanov attackers. The Duchy forces, proud warriors, certainly wanting to do the best that they can to uh, counter their opponents. You can see that off now, utilizing a lot of firepower on one of the assets. We have crossfire set up by the defenders, doing a nice job of making Takanov choose which one of the areas that they want to shoot. See that they're uh, heavily firing on one of the assets off to the left, which might allow the uh, forces of the defenders on the right to uh, counter a bit. As you can see, uh, Ivan and uh, Thunder trying to get up and provide uh, cover fire for their teammates uh, that are about to be hit. And uh, now they will be outnumbered almost 3 to 1, and uh, they will not last long. They'll put up a good fight, see if they can take one or two mechs down with them. But uh, this is going to be an almost one sided fight now uh, as we close out. Brave attempt by the defense, but ultimately. The Donar and the patience of Takanov uh, are enough to turn it over as uh, Thunder is about to get overrun 6-1. to one. He'll do what he can, but you can see not much. And uh, the forces uh, of Duchy will be uh, disappointed in what happened on this map, but they will certainly come back as hard as they can, as determined as they ever were, to try and fight. As uh, Bob tries to buy corn some time to get back, Bob uh, attempting to give them as much hell as they give him. We have uh, about six minutes remaining. We may or may not get there. So the Takanov forces have to pay for those assets. They have to buy them with money. So they don't necessarily want to lose something if they don't have to. Bob now being surrounded by all the forces on all sides. They're encircled. There's still four assets remaining, but these are the two that we have on scope. Show you Bob down here trying to make it a more even fight, trying to take on Dola one on one, trying to move back up and leave Dola to corn. As uh, Bob and Kill Them All uh, fight each other. Now Bob trying to get back down to get away from Kill Them All and his uh, teammate. Bob desperately trying to do anything that he can to extend this fight as uh, Corn and Dola are now going at it. Corn may be stuck, but Corn's going to give him hell with AC2s and the Gauss and nothing else to fire on him and uh, ultimately just too much damage from that uh, BC Donar as now Bob will attempt to take down 
Dola, but that's not going to be the case here as uh, we search to see if the duchy has any forces remaining on the field. We have uh, Grabaker. In Art of War, the sole remaining survivors of the Duchy of Small, and uh, they will fight as hard as they can. May have had uh, a DC, perhaps, as we see the other pilot moving quickly. Art of War may be uh, unable to fight back here as he's possibly stuck. You can see the comments of uh, the dead pilot uh, expressing his uh, disgust with the uh, defeat. This, uh, in the time we've been away, uh, it's Grabaker is, uh, still here. Up in the mountains, uh, attempting to fight anything near him, which, uh, the nearest we have is, uh, Art of War and Grabaker over here, the Donar Seas Art of War. And, uh, Mr. Gray is the closest asset as we will close out at 55. Three minutes remaining. A situation like this, you try to still communicate with your teammate because you never know when you can take down one of those living assets and um, and uh, make it harder for your opponent to bring good assets against you in the third and if uh, you get there, fourth map. Right now in the situation, Grab a Curl will try to hit some things, but he'll need to get down to his teammate in order uh, to uh, support him. They're trying to get in, but as you can see, time is running low. But there's still more than enough time with uh, three minutes remaining. So Grabaker uh, will try to get some shots off, but with all those teammates behind him, if he d isn't careful, he will die. The Bushwhacker able to uh, provide some firepower. But now uh, the combined forces of... Uh, they're greatly outmatched now by the combined forces of the Tikhanov attackers, and this will just be a minute of time as Grabaker attempts and fights very bravely, taking down uh, Nivix's arm and attempting to get this mech down. And uh, he fought as hard as he could, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you're just stuck between a rock and a hard place, and uh, your mech can only do so much as we see to if there are any survivors and there are not. In a commanding victory, the ELH forces push on and are only one map away from su successfully taking another planet. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Chaos March Network.